G'day guys, here we are, number 40, the carcass secret mitre dovetail joint. Um, this is the last joint exercise we're doing before we move on to actually drawing some projects. Um, so let's get straight into it. I said I had a, a story about it. Um, it's funny, I remember when I first saw this joint, I saw it in the, my woodwork textbook at high school, and I remember being like, why the hell would anyone do this joint? It looks so complicated, it looks so difficult to cut, and at the end of the day, you don't actually even see the joint like i'll show you here i've drawn it um if i flip this around 180 i think okay i can move it together um when you actually put the joint together when you finish it all you see is a mitre you don't actually see any of the interior joinery so you can see there it like slides together perfectly but like yeah i don't know it's, it's, i remember just thinking why the hell would anyone do that i ended up actually cutting one and, you know, it was really difficult to cut to get the angles right and fit dovetails in there. And I was just like, that took so much effort and you can't even see it when it's done. But I guess, you know, in some projects you might need, um, you might need the strength of the dovetail, like on the front of a drawer or something, but you not, might not want to see anything on the side. You might just want to see that, you know, the grain, not the actual dovetail joint. But anyways, um, yeah, I, was, I always wanted, I wonder if I could draw this in SketchUp. So I had a crack at it and was able to do it. It's a little bit tricky um, and it's been a while since I drew it. So hopefully I don't make too many mistakes in this tutorial, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking on it. Um, our piece of timber is 140 by 140 by 19. So let's get that in. 140 comma 19. Zoom in, push it up by 140, 140. Okay, now we'll make a component quickly. Create. Now, double click to edit the component. Okay, um, I guess I think the first thing we need to do is put in this mitre. Right? I'll zoom in so we can see the detail a bit more. Yeah, we've got to put a mitre in here. So that's going to be a 45 degree mitre. Um, so we grab the protractor on the blue axis. We want to click here, here, and then type in 45. That gives us that little 45 degree angle, which is here. Now, um, we can see on the joint, um, the dovetail or the pins, they don't actually go all the way to the top. They stop um, a little bit. And so we get this sort of four by four flat slope, I guess you could call it, um, that, that four by four mitre where it would just be timber on timber. There's no actual um, dovetail joinery there. So the information given about that is it's a top slope four by four from corner. So from here, you've got to go in four millimeters and from here down four millimeters. And that should meet right on there. Perfect. And we can just take this straight across to the edge, 15. Um, and that will give us the top. That part there is the top of the tails, right? So we've come in four by four. That's the top of the tails. So um, we'll put in a few lines first. We'll put in this line straight across the front. There we go. And this one we can just do as a tape measure line, I think. We can just draw that one um, straight down to 140 because this is where we're going to actually lay out the dimensions of the dovetail. So if I zoom in on that, we can see there's a three millimeter gap here where there's a slope and that is where you'll see, you know, the mitre joint on top where it sort of hides the dovetail. But we've got three tails, the tops of them are 36 millimeters and there's a gap of 10 millimeters in between. So if we lay those out, that will just leave us with, a lot of, with whatever's left over. We don't actually need to put in a dimension there. So first thing, we measure halfway. So that'll be 70. Why didn't that work? Come on. Seven, zero, enter. There it is. Um, and that lands us right in the middle of this tail. So this tail is 36 millimeters wide from top to top. So half of that, I think, is 18. Uh, I don't know. How's my maths? 18 plus 18. Yeah, that's 36. Maybe I'll just double check. 36. Good one, Mr. Mandrich. All right. Um, from here, we're going to go 10 millimeters up and from there, 10 millimeters down to leave that gap for the um, pins. Then from there, we'll go another 36 for the next tail, and from here, another 36 for the next tail. Okay, now we've got all the sort of corner points that we need. We can start using the protractor to put those angles in. So the pitch of this dovetail is a one to eight, um, which in the last time we did a one to eight, I think we remember that's a seven degree angle with the protractor. So let's get it on the green axis by hitting the left arrow key. Click here. Go straight along the red axis, click somewhere, and then bring it in, type in 7, enter. Same here. Left arrow key to get it on the green axis. Click along the red axis, 
bring it in, and then seven enter. That gives us those slopes. Okay, uh, we're gonna click here to there, escape, and then here to here, escape. Now we can copy these lines so we don't need to use a protractor each time. Select that line, hold down shift, and select that line. Then we can grab the move tool, hit control, so we're copying it, grab that, move it to the next set of guide points. Hit control again, grab that point, move it to the next set of guide points. Okay, so there's those tails. Now, I reckon before we get started with this, we might need to remove this slope bit. So we'll grab the pencil tool and trace from here to there to there. And we should be able to push this all the way through. Yep, there we go. Now, we'll remove these two bits first. We push them all the way back to um, slope, these two middle bits. But it's a little bit trickier on the corner because we see we have to leave three millimeters of, oop, sorry, what happened there? Three millimeters of the mitre joint. So to do that, um, we're going to have to measure three millimeters in. Um, and I reckon we probably have to go from here straight to the top, push this little bit in to the slope, and then we have to probably have to put in a pencil line here and push that bit through. Yeah, that looks right. So we've got the gap there for the pin to go in and we've got that slope on the edge. We can just remove that pencil line there because we don't need that. Okay, exact same thing on the bottom. It'll be a three mil gap as well or three mil left for the slope. Um, so we'll go three millimeters up. We'll draw a pencil line from here to there. We'll push this Oh, hang on. Yep, uh, yep, that's good. Cool. Grab the pencil tool from there to there. Oh, that's done something funny. What happened there? Might have put a slope in. Can I delete that? Yep. Oh, don't know why I did that. Sorry. Um, click here, push that up, and that leaves us with a slope and a gap for the pin. Perfect. We can get rid of this little bit. And that is this piece done. Done? Yeah, done. Okay, cool. So we can get out of this component now. We'll delete the guides just so we don't get confused on the next piece. Uh, that looks pretty good. So next piece, the pin board. Um, the start will be pretty similar. We need to put in the same kind of slope. We just need to remove the opposite. So we're not leaving the tails. We're removing the tails this time. <clears throat> so uh, we'll grab the rectangle. We want to jump on the red axis if we can. It'll let us. Come on. Maybe not. Um, why don't I let me jump on the red axis? There we go. Just had to hover over the origin. So from here, 140, comma 19, enter. Push this one up, 140. There we go. All right, now we'll make it a component quickly. Triple click, right click, make component, create. Double click to edit it. Now, layout will be pretty similar. Let's start off with the protractor. This top corner here, click click, move it this way, type in 45, enter. Okay, we'll put in that little four by four slope. So four and four. Um, I reckon we can probably remove that bit now. If we push this all the way down, hopefully that won't cause us problems later. We'll see. Um, then we put a pencil line from here all the way down where the bottom of the pins will be. And we could measure everything, uh, or we could just use reference off this model and use a tape measure. So on this piece, we can see that angles aren't going on this face. The angles are going to be on here because when they join together, um, that sort of slope, it's going to line up with this face, not this face. So um, I guess from on this edge, right, this edge here is this edge here. And on this edge, we have the bottoms of the slopes. So you said that's the bottom of the slope. That's the top of the slope. Um, so we want to grab the bottom of the slope and draw that straight across to there. All right, bottom of the slope, straight across. Bottom of the slope, straight across on the red axis. Don't grab the tops. Or I don't think, yeah, I think you'll run into problems if you use the tops of the slope. Uh, bottom of the slope, across on the red axis. Okay. 
So now from here, we've got to use the protractor to put in our seven degree angle. Uh, we're going to be on the red axis. So we click, go across to here, and we're going to be opening it up that way. So seven degrees from here, same deal. Click across on the green axis and open it up to seven degrees. Okay, I reckon I can trace those with the pencil tool. Yep. I can now highlight, I can click on that, hold down shift, click on that, grab the move tool, hit control, click once there, click, and hit, grab, oh, sorry, I gotta hit the control to copy it, grab that point, move it down to that intersection. Okay, looks pretty good. So now I think I can just push this down to 15 millimeters. Yep, push that down, push that down. So there's the pins removed. Now we've just got to do that little, leave that little three millimeter gap again. Um, so I think that should be probably, that's probably easier this time. We just measure down three mil. Um, or maybe it might be easy if we just put a pencil line in here and push this down three mil. Yeah, that worked. We'll remove that little line there because we don't need that. Did that do anything funny? No, I left it pretty good. Okay, and this one might do the weird thing. Click, click. Yeah, I don't know why it's putting that slope in, but unless we can just delete it. Grab that face there, push it up three millimeters for that little slope. We'll grab the eraser, erase that line. And I think that's just about done it. Let's delete the guides and have a look. Delete guides. Okay, that looks about right. Um, to check it, uh, we'll paint it first, I guess. Why not? Paint them the light color. Then we will grab the rotate tool here next to the move tool. We will want to be on the blue axis, so hit the up arrow. Click there, click at the bottom of the miter and swing it around, type in 90 degrees. And then grab the tip with the move tool, move it to the other tip. And yeah, that's closed up like a perfect miter joint. Can't see anything there. But if we move it around, we can see that, yeah, see how that the the pins are fitting right into the tails there? That's perfect. So all your hard work that you spent ages doing, drawing or cutting or whatever way you're doing it, has just gone away because it's been hidden by a mitre joint. <laughs> it's a weird joint, isn't it? But hey, pretty cool. Um, so if you followed through with that, well done. That's great stuff. Um, save it as your, what are we, what's this one called? Number 40. File save number 40 carcass secret mitered oh, hell. Okay. so if you made it all the way here bloody well done mate it's good work that's awesome that was a lot of sketch up and um all the skills you've learned from doing that should transfer across to doing all these projects right when we get to this pencil box, you're going to have no problems doing it. Like you shouldn't even need to watch the tutorial. You should have all the skills necessary to draw something simple like that. Um, but I don't know. If you like hearing my voice, you can come and watch the tutorials because I'm going to do a tutorial for all of these as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, good work if you finished all of them. Respect. That's awesome. Um, you probably will need the tutorials when it gets to this clock because you can see there's a whole lot of different um, components and stuff. Um, and we've learned some new skills as well, like how to do these turned columns and these finials on top and stuff. Um, so yeah, all right, great work guys. I'll see you in the next video.